2019 Ole Miss volleyball team comes into SEC play riding an eight-game win streak. Through the swings and turns of a season, the matchups with the top of your conference become measuring stick contests that can spring a season forward. With the Tennessee Volunteers coming to town, the Rebels were more than willing to accept the help. Children's Hospital. We're gonna hang out with some kids today and uh, hopefully make the day a little bit better. What's your name? Oh, oh, Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Nicole. <laughs> Whoa, uh, that is cool. I made it. You want to switch so you can do the, the important part? Yeah. Okay. That's easier. No. Ah. Okay, so sorry. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Dang it. Yeah. Huh. Go! Oh my goodness. Who's your favorite character? Uh, Me too. Yeah, I love Jack Jack. Yeah, he would have a good guy. Two. Two. One, two. You better not, man. What do I, I got nowhere else to go. There's something for you to build down there. Sorry. Sorry. Dr. Octopus, what the heck? He's kind of like Lady Octopus. Yeah. Oh my God. They were to oil. What just happened? That makes sense. You gotta go through fast, Percy. Okay, ready? Go. Go through fast, go. <laughs> it's so bad. It's just, it's a, it's a pleasure to be able to be around the, these kids and, um, you know, just hopefully brighten their day up a little bit. Cause I know they, they brightened up ours probably a whole lot more than, than we brighten theirs. And when you get an opportunity to do something like this, it just um, puts everything in perspective for you. Goes high off hands and pushes the Rebels ahead by two. Anna Bear doesn't look tired. A big kill to start set five as she goes down the line. Bear, huge hammer of a swing on the near side. Here's Bear, off hands for another kill. While this success was predicted by some, a trip across the pond would be where Anna would show up and show out. You know, coming in, you don't really know what to expect from freshmen. I mean, you see them in camps and You've talked to them on their official visits, but um, we got a little taste of it in Europe when she um, was hitting on the outside for us. They were just rotating outsides, but like I was absolutely shocked. The Europe trip really helped me find my stride because I was able to work on what I need to work on the court, and I was able to just get comfortable with everyone and not worry about if I make an error, I was able to just bounce back. It's been fun too to see her kind of coming into her own and in Europe, she had like no facial expressions when she'd get kills, and now like she's has so much energy, and it's so fun. And I think that just shows how great of a player she is to come in her freshman year and be able to be as successful as she has been. That one rolled through the hands of Coulter for the first kill for Anna Bear, the freshman out of St. Louis, a two-time freshman of the week in the Southeastern Conference. That's a fantastic way to welcome yourself to collegiate volleyball. I don't know if we knew how big of an impact she would make, so that's been a very pleasant surprise for us. Um, but she is just fearless out on the court, and that's very hard to find in freshmen. She's hardworking as well, and I think the more and more as we go, you'll start to see more and more of her. She wants to learn, she wants to get better, and that's the biggest part of it. Anna's the type of person to always ask for feedback. Like, if she is struggling, it's something she'd be like, hey, Purse, like, help, help me out, you know, what can I do? And I'm Always like we're always helping her and we're helping each other and so it's been really really nice to have her because she's so open and uh, she also is a really really strong hitter so it helps us out a lot. While being a freshman is all about learning, 
The opportunity to learn from one of the best is something Bear takes advantage of. I always look up to Emily because if I'm ever struggling on the court, like if I'm not able to get a kill, I'll always ask her what I need to do. And she always hypes me up on the court. She's always encouraging me to just play my best and she's always there to just be my hype man and just help me whenever I need help. Among the list of rebels to look up to, Emily Straup would be near the top. Over the last three seasons, her impact has been felt across NCAA volleyball. Back row set to Straup. Big kill. New career high for Emily Straup. Straup again. Full house time, the blocker, they can't stop it. Emily Straub just sent it to the floor with the cannon on her right shoulder. She's going to leave here arguably one of, if not the best volleyball player to come through here. Six rotation outside hitter. She gets served at all the time. She's a, one of our primary passers. From a defensive standpoint, she's just gotten better and better. My freshman year, I I barely really played. I think a couple of games I was like a DS, and that was really exciting for me. So no, I did not expect to end up like where I am. My freshman year was really hard, but um, and at times like I didn't want to do it anymore. But I feel like from that, that made me a stronger player and like helped me be a better leader too. Now going into my senior year, she knows. Um, what spots to hit, you know, how to swing high and, you know, adjust when, uh, the, when the defense is set up on her. I think a lot of it has to do with power. I mean, and then I think there's a lot of teams that just don't have somebody that can replicate what she does in the gym. So practicing for it is really hard because she puts that ball on you really, really quickly and really hard. Straup on the outside. She's got a full block. Bars is there. Purcell gets to the second ball. Straup again off the back row player. And Ole Miss wins it in five. Two centers will play. Straup welcoming herself to 2019. How about that swing, Brittany? If you don't know, now you know. It's almost hard to describe. She's definitely the kind of kid a coach hopes for. Uh, she's a workhorse and she puts her all out on the court every single time she steps out. She's always willing to work hard and fight on the court and she's not going to give up. That hard work has led to many accomplishments over her years, including breaking records for single game kills three times, single season kills two times, and is currently closing in on the all-time kills record. I think I'm more just excited for this team and this season we're about to have. And um, it just feels different than past seasons. I think we're going to be really su successful. And if I end up breaking it, cool. Like If not and we're still successful, I feel like this year, um, because we're distributing the ball more, and that just shows um, how much better that is for our team. I think Straub's a groundbreaking player. and. It's funny to kind of watch her evolution from being a spot player her freshman year to being a starting as a right side her sophomore year and moving to the outside and then all of a sudden she's we can't not have that kid on the court. For her it's definitely something that that's um, you know really cool to see um, all that hard work come to fruition. Now she will be one probably one of the first to tell you that she'd much rather see the team succeed and she'd rather us be playing in the NCAA tournament. She'd give up those records and the accolades and all that stuff. She just wants the team to do well. I really want to make it to the tournament. That's still been my big goal, but um, I really, for myself, I just want to enjoy my last season, like a bunch of lasts, and I think finishing off with the other three seniors, I just really want to take in like all the memories and the moments we've had together and have a good last senior season. The, the three matches that they played last weekend, they held everybody to like under 20, some of them 10 and 12 points, okay? I think that's gonna be the, the lineup that they go with. So they found a lot of success with the 5-1, so I think that's what they're gonna do. What's on this sheet is what they, what they ran last weekend. Um, I, I think that, I mean, like I said, they were really successful. They, they hit for a super high percentage. Good? Yeah. All right. Our block is going to have to be set up in a, in a good spot because they're a really good offensive team, attacking, 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 all right? And so the more touches 
positive touches we can get, the more stuff blocks we can get, of course, plays to our advantage. And let that be a conscious effort as we go into Friday that that's something that we're going to emphasize. <laughs> Good tag, Nio. Good slowdown. There it is, right there. Boom. That's in. In there. Oh. That looks pretty good, though. We're serving well. Everybody's serving. I think they're serving really tough. Yeah. That's what we need, and that's why we've, we've been out of system quite a bit over here. It's been good serving coming our way. We've got to keep that up. Keep firing. When the play, if the play happens quick like that, yeah. and the blockers are in, then you totally can just rip it line. You can go straight line either. You must start start in your normal spot, and then as soon as she tosses, like okay, this is a, this is the ball we know is going. Then you open up and go. Score here! Score here! Come on! Proud of this side today. Y'all served really tough. Put up a solid block, lots of good defense. I mean, guys, that's what we need. We need that competitiveness every day in practice because SEC's not easy. It's not ever going to be easy. So when we push each other in practice, it just makes us better. Be fresh and ready to go for Friday, all right? Woo! Sharks on three, one, two, three! Sharks! Yeah. Welcome to Maggie's Minute. I'm a freshman DS, and I'm here with freshman middle blocker Ava Wampler. Pleasure. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Um, well, Maggie, personally, it would have to be super speed um, because I just have not been super speedy on the court lately, and I'd like to up my game in that area. What is your spirit animal and why? My spirit animal is a bear, because Anna Bear. What would be your go-to pregame song? My go-to pregame song is Bad, Bad, Bad by Young Thug because it makes me feel bad and like I can conquer anything on the court. Okay, so I have two. So I'm a big Swifty, so my first one would be Ready For It by Taylor Swift, and then the second one would be She Wolf by Shakira. Well, give us your best Coach Mac impersonation. <laughs> All right, guys, if we get two wins on the road this weekend, ice cream for everybody. <laughs> well, thank you for watching Maggie's Minute, and I hope to see you at the game against Tennessee Friday night.
Happy Friday! I have this for you. 6.30 tonight. Right. Volleyball game. Right. Hope to see you there. Free t-shirt. TGIF! Woo! 6.30, yeah! Oh, Hold down. We're leaving now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Enjoy your lunch. You know, we're not going to do anything super special because cameras are on us and uh, because I think what we've been doing before games is what's been getting us prepared. Tonight is about belief, continuing to be about belief, and you guys understanding and realizing that you belong. And let's just get after them tonight. I'm ready to bring home that win. Yep. All right. So let's circle up. What's better than opening a night play in conference action tonight at the Gillum Center? Tennessee, one of the most battle-tested teams in the country, invades Oxford, trying to snap the Rebels' eight-match win streak. Tennessee's a, definitely a top-four team in the league. They uh, caught fire last year. We knew everything about all their players, what they like to do. We were going to have to play our best game to beat them, and so we all just worked really, really hard. We got really, really excited and amped up for the game. The feds are hooked up, so. The feds are here. The feds are here, bro. In set one, an early back and forth battle would take a turn when Tennessee's senior outside hitter Tessa Grubbs caught fire, tallying seven quick kills in the first half. She's taken nine swings and she's got seven kills. We got to slow her down. And we've had about four or five transition opportunities that I think we've tipped. If we've had five, we've tipped four. Right? Keep the pressure on them. Attack, attack, attack. Hey. The lead would prove to be too much as the Lady Vols would take the first set, 25 to 20. They had, uh, I think, 20 or 21 kills in that first set. You just don't see that very often. We actually didn't play that bad of a first set. They just played so much better. And this now has to bounce back after losing set number one. Now they're looking for that first win at home, and boy, it would be a statement to do it against Tennessee. On the far side, that's Anna Bear and Nia Warnell. Yes! Great job, guys! Great job! Great block! Two teams looking to get conference play started on the right foot. Anna Bear, her first ever SEC match, and she's leading the way with six kills. Bear again goes off hands, it's popped up. Second ball was called off by Pelazon, and then she never got there. Hey, you should probably keep that off the floor! Timeout taken. We've got to generate some points on our side. We really haven't done that yet. Let's make them pay, but we have to transition, earn points, side out right away. Okay, keep the pressure on them when they make errors for us. Okay? Although the Rebels were comfortably ahead, Tennessee wouldn't give up the set so easily. Riding the wave of a 6 to nothing run, they took a late 20 to 19 lead. The Rebels would look to their senior leader for a response. 6-0 run for Tennessee. Strout snaps the point streak for the Lady Balls and ties the set up at 20. Strout in the back row. Which is not typically what you would think. Moves out for that left-handed play. A knuckling serve from Strout. Another ace from Strout. 23-20 Ole Miss. Challenging Mahaffey, second ball to Hanson, a swing by Grubbs, no touch, finds the red paint, we're all tied up at one game apiece. A great response by Ole Miss as we head to set number three in Oxford. In spite of the fact that the momentum was on the side of the home team, Tennessee would respond in set three early and take an 11-4 lead. It's happened to us a few times this season where we kind of get a little behind and and it's we have maybe a, a set against a good team that we just struggle with. And I, I felt like that set in those five was one of those. They kind of jumped out on us and then they held on and, and kind of kept that cushion. Ultimately, the set was lost 25 to 19. Turning their attention to set four, the Rebs would come out running.
Harris pushes outside it's Emily Straub. She'll have another swing at the overpass and put it away. Mahaffey rejected. Rowe puts it over. Saltemeyer goes up and takes a swing and finds the line. Second ball from Hanson is pushed into the hands of Niall Warnell. She throws her hands up in the air. And this team's just so resilient. I mean, they realize that the next set starts back at 0-0. Let's win this one. I think just with this team, we have a lot of heart going into the fourth set. We're like, we lost the third. That's fine. Like, we're going to win the fourth, and we're going to win the fifth. So when you set 0-0, we're going to win this one. The Rebels fought their way to set point 24 to 19, but proving their own resilience, the Lady Vols would again fight back to tie it at 24. This time, freshman Anna Bear would answer the call in a big way. Slide coming from Andrino. She's rejected on the solo block by Anna Bear. That is about as big of a moment for the freshman Anna Bear as she's had this season. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! Here's Hanson going outside to Perinar. She puts it through the block. It's dug up by Nicole Purcell. Emily Straub, this one sent back over by Perinar. Incredible effort. Straub with another chance. This one dug up by Coulter. She'll have another swing. Powered off the block, and we're going to five here at the Gillen Center. That is an impressive, impressive last. I believe it took a seven points to end what should have been a one-point push for Ole Miss. Believe, guys. We got to keep believing here, all right? Execution. We earned a lot of points in that set. We just gave up a couple of runs. We, we keep those to a minimum, guys. This is going to be ours, all right? Let's go. Ole Miss takes game number four, forces a fifth set here at the Gillum Center. It'll be a set to 15 points, win by two. She'll give Ole Miss a 3-1 lead. Another ace for Ole Miss. Another point for the Rebels. Lauren Mars goes up and puts it straight down on the overpass. Paranar blocked. Lauren Bars and Aubrey Seltemeyer. Paranar's blocked again. This time it's Guzik and company. It was just got the whole crowd excited. You know, our team, like when you block someone like that good of a hitter, you know, you turn around, you see your team so excited for you. So that just gets you even more pumped up. I feel like anytime anyone gets a block during uh, pressure points, it's just a good momentum. Um, pusher so those blocks helped a lot to get us to just keep rolling. When you make that switch being up whether it's up one two whatever you know you just feel like you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yes! Let's go other side other side. As the two teams switch sides the rebels would keep a stranglehold on the lead. Deep cross court goes the freshman bear. Lauren Barr is going right side to Guzik, who tips and does it masterfully to the left side. This will be Strout. She goes high off hands and picks up another kill, 13-11. For match point, there was no question where the ball was going. Who do we want taking it at match point? Strout. Yeah, she's swinging really well right now. Okay. Uh, oh. Both of these teams have been tested in non-conference and are ready for moments like this. 14-13, Ole Miss match point. Match It'll point. be Sedona Hansen serving for the Lady Vols. The serve is up from the senior. Cross-court swing from Strout gets the call on the line. 15-13, the Rebels. We'll win this one. The celebration has begun at Gillum. And for the first time in his six seasons at the Elm, Stephen McRoberts wins an SEC opener. Like top of our conference usually, we're amped. 
I'm so proud of our team. We played so hard. I'm really, really excited. That was a huge, huge win for us, and I know that that win is going to carry on for the rest of the season. And the Rebs are freaking running. <laughs> We controlled it the rest of the way, and we did what we said we were going to do at the beginning of the set. No runs for them. All right. I am so proud of you guys. This is, guys, believe. You got to believe. All right. They're as good as anybody in the conference. All right. This is our year. Yeah. All right. But guys, we cannot be satisfied. No. no. Right. Because no. you know they were looking at us and going, "All oh, those eight wins, they haven't beat anybody." Now we have. If you twirl around counterclockwise three times, it helps first. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, hey! So you guys, I felt like you seemed very calm and Go away. <laughs> God. Where's she doing? Sorry. The mayor's coming? I'm sorry. Paris, you can do it. You're gonna end up on blue bars this year. No. Go by Ryan. So that just means that they can. I'm gonna go over here. Actually, the nail clippers up, Maggie. Because I had a loose cuticle and it was hurting me. Stay in your lane and stop worrying about me. <laughs>